I'm here to talk to you about uh, IPFS, but before we do that, I wanted to talk about the internet in general. Right, so the, this talk is titled, The Mission to Upgrade the Internet. And that's not just our mission, it's all our mission. Uh, we have become dependent on this amazing machine, the internet. We think, uh, both in the IPFS project and Protocol Labs, that this is the most important piece of technology humanity has ever created uh, and has brought about an enormous amount of social change in just a few decades. Uh, you know, I'm going to flash a few photos of what you might associate with the internet. These are undersea cables, data centers, people using the internet throughout uh, their learning in a lecture here. I'm sure that all of your devices are right now using the internet. Uh, learning for, for students, learning in all kinds of places. Uh, Wikipedia, access to all knowledge. Uh, the ability to watch videos in some countries. Uh, <laughs> The ability to collaborate and work uh, across uh, the globe. Uh, the ability to stay in touch with your loved ones from far away. Uh, the ability to work really remotely. Uh, the ability to collaborate on open source and build amazing pieces of technology together. Uh, the ability to travel has been revolutionized. The uh, packaging and, and buying of goods has been dramatically changed. Uh, purchases of all sorts. Uh, Markets are about to be, uh, have already been revolutionized multiple times and they're being changed again. Uh, this is also a, a problem that uh, the internet faces today. Uh, we have all of this uh, happening. We also saw some of this going on with the internet. Uh, we also have a bunch of problems that are associated with our use of the internet and the freedom of communication that we have. It has some tricky bits, um, trickier still. Uh, so w one interesting thing to look at is graphs like this, uh, the users of the internet. So this is a graph, uh, not exactly of the internet, this is kind of starting with the web when it was opened up for, for commercial use. Um, and we've, we are up to around three billion people now, and that's almost half the people on the planet. Uh, so the graph looks like this. Uh, it's still kind of far off, but this is growing at a tremendous pace. And we also have almost 8 billion mobile phones. Uh, that's an interesting discrepancy there, right? 8 billion mobile phones, but only about 3 billion people on the internet. Uh, what's going on there? Uh, the UN has declared, or not quite declared, but it, there has been suggestions to declare the internet a, um, a right for all humans. And so this machine that we all have built together is pretty important uh, to our everyday lives. Most of what we do today uh, is mediated in some form or another. Uh, through the internet. And not just the internet, but the web and mobile applications and so on, all these different application platforms that ride on the internet. Uh, the difference between the internet and the web, by the way, is like the internet is the wires and the connectivity framework, and the web is the application platform that we humans use. Uh, so we don't, we, you don't, we don't speak in byte streams to each other, so we can't directly use the internet. Uh, we have to use these applications, and the properties of how these applications uh, get to us, how we find them, retrieve them, use them and so on, uh, those properties have vast implications on our capabilities as, human, uh, as humans because the software that we use through uh, the internet, um, you know, things like the web, uh, so things that you deploy through the web, these sorts of applications that you use daily, uh, the way they function and are able to function uh, is defined through a whole bunch of protocols underneath the hood and the properties of those determine what you can do as a human. So if you want to give yourself a superpower, give the whole world a superpower, you go underneath the hood and you change protocols around, uh, and then you can just patch the internet and now the world uh, has new things. And this is amazingly powerful, right? Like when you think about the ability to actually upgrade the internet, like the, the thought that you, as a person that was just a user, could suddenly say, oh, wouldn't it be great if the internet did X, Y, and Z, and actually go through and patch it uh, get everyone to adopt something and suddenly this new set of capabilities emerges and everyone <laughs> starts sharing this. This is, this is what um, we all should be thinking about. I mean, you are all thinking about this because you are here. Uh, but it's, it's good to be reminded of the importance of, of this mission and your users, right? So uh, the images that you saw did not just have, you know, nice uh, offices in some well-connected city, right? Like the internet is everywhere and it's, it's the edge is increasing. So you have to think very carefully about your users out in the edges as well. 
Uh, so there's a whole bunch of problems with the internet uh, and the web, and these are the ones that we think mostly about. Uh, there's a whole bunch of others, but I want to highlight some, and this is what the IPFS project is about. So the web has gone from this more distributed and decentralized form to a pretty centralized construction now where uh, you really only think about one huge web server that's uh, serving millions of clients, or in some cases, billions, right? And so it looks something like this. Uh, and this has all sorts of problems. Uh, this centralization uh, is the cause of a, of a whole bunch of other issues, like efficiency, um, we, you know, with Gangnam Style being viewed 2.5 billion times, uh, if you calculate out roughly, like, back of the envelope calculation, you, this is the amount of bandwidth that has been served through Google servers. Uh, things like a ubiquitous computing are taking out the web. Uh, you can't really use the web when you're disconnected or offline. You have to constantly be, be connected. So if, if we have a whole bunch of devices here and we want to talk to each other and work with each other and the connectivity to the backbone falls apart, we're host. Uh, why? Like, we have supercomputers in our pockets. Like, this should not be a problem. Uh, there's a very terrible security model. Um, basically, nothing at rest is uh, uh, encrypted, so you're, we're only encrypting the connections between point-to-point uh, -point links instead of encrypting uh, the content at rest, and we should be really thinking about this. Uh, data control and data sovereignty are basically non-existent. Uh, these huge organizations kind of own your data and own how you access that data. Not in name, right? You sort of own your data in name, but you can't really link people to, to it in a different uh, location. When we think about the internet being used in locations like this, uh, you realize that most of the websites out there just don't work. They're too heavy. They too, uh, they're, have all these assumptions about the connectivity and the latency, and suddenly the people that need the internet most can't use it. This is a serious problem. Think about how the internet would fare, your application would fare in a natural disaster when people can't connect to the majority of your infrastructure. What if you provide some like, important connectivity fabric for people, like a messaging platform or something? Uh, you have to think about these cases. Then suddenly there's things like surprise oppression one day. That's, that's always fun, right? Uh, and the biggest problem is uh, that, in, in my point of view, is that the, the web has no notion of, of giving permanence to links. Links break over time, right? So the, this idealized, uh, web of documents is really a web of, of documents in, in specific computers. And so that's what um, causes all these, these issues where like, you can just go to one host and, and block that. So these are the problems that the IPFS project is, is here to solve. And um, I wanted to mostly talk about that. We can go through a little bit of the, of the actual architecture and so on. But, but it's really about making sure that these, these websites that we depend on can be accessed through uh, through our mobile phones, through our browsers, and so on, without relying on a constant connection to the backbone all the time. Uh, that's a model that worked really well to scale up the web, but over time, uh, we are no longer able to rely on that. And we, we have been sold this myth that connectivity will always, you know, suddenly achieve perfect um, throughput and, and perfect latency and so on, or like really good latency and so on, and that everyone's going to get connected and to just like sit back and wait until uh, everyone gets wired up and everything will be fine. But the reality is very different. The applications as they're structured today will not work uh, for tons of people on the planet unless we change the underlying structure, unless we go under the hood and patch the protocols uh, to change how data flows in the network. Uh, so the IPFS project is about that. It's about turning this link structure uh, that forces us to go to a specific location into a different link structure that allows us to go directly to the content if, wherever it's available. So in the traditional model, you would, even if a whole bunch of people had the content that you're trying to find, you would still be forced to go and talk to a specific uh, set of hosts. So the good news in all of this, uh, in all the problems, is that uh, the internet has been upgraded many, many times before, right? And this is not a, an event that happens. Uh, it's rather a continuous uh, stream of, of happenings uh, that sometimes, you know, have huge spikes, like for example the web. When the web exploded and so on, uh, we saw an enormous amount of innovation. We saw an enormous amount of innovation again in, in kind of like the web 2.0 early days. Uh, we're seeing yet another massive uh, wave. But all of these changes happen over time, uh, and they, they go through this process of turning ideas into these protocols that form uh, the part of the infrastructure of the applications that we use. So the, the, the exciting thing for us is that changing <coughs> the network, changing the internet, upgrading with new capabilities is really as simple as translating a whole bunch of good ideas 
into running applications. And there's this pipeline. There's this pipeline of going from ideas to more refined ideas into specs. And once you have specs, you can turn those into code. Once they're code, you can deploy them to computers. And once they're in computers, people can use them through applications. Uh, the reality is that this pipeline gets pretty long and problematic when, when protocols that are making their way down get stuck somewhere in between because maybe they didn't have the right implementation, maybe they were kind of flawed or something. Um, but it truly is pretty simple uh, when you think about it. You don't need to be a massive corporation. You don't need to uh, convince tons of governments to patch anything. You just have to have really good ideas, a really good implementation, and a really good adoption path. Like make sure that your thing is actually desired by, by the network. And if it is, you'll get adoption. Uh, so that's, that's pretty exciting because it means that we can uh, apply our engineering and skills and so on to fundamentally change how the whole machine works. Uh, the hard part of building the internet, all the hardware, has been done for a long time. Uh, I mean, it's still happening, of course, but, but the bulk of it is, is there. Uh, the software is, is much more malleable and changeable, and that's, that's what's really exciting to us. Uh, this is another problem with this pipeline, the fact that most ideas die in research. Um, they never quite make it all the way to, to applications, and, and this, fixing this pipeline is a whole other challenge that um, we have for ourselves, we, that we want to upgrade the internet. We have to get really good at this pipeline, uh, at translating ideas into developed libraries and implementations into applications that actually work, and so on. And all along, you can start making assumptions about your users, and if you're not careful, pretty soon you'll cut out whole swaths of users from using your application. For example, there's a lot of uh, TLS implementations that have some short, short uh, timeouts for, for the handshake. And if you have a pretty big latency, like out in the middle of nowhere, um, you're, you're done. You can't view a website. You're just completely caught out of it. Whoops. Uh, and I mean, there's a lot of really good reasons for things like that. You, you want to have a short window and so on. But you know, these problems show up, and suddenly someone deploys this implementation somewhere and accidentally cuts off tons of users. Uh, the other, like, one, one extremely exciting thing that's happening right now is that we're seeing this major wave of innovation through a whole bunch of different projects, right? And uh, I really see Bitcoin as a thing that catalyzed all this change. There was a lot of latent um, development happening or latent uh, desire to, to change things, but uh, Bitcoin was a thing that reminded us that it's actually fairly easy to deploy a thing and uh, get it adopted by a bunch of people if it's the right thing. And that change is really around the corner uh, if, if you work hard and you're careful about how you, how you construct your protocol. Uh, and that whole thing just uh, caused an explosion of, of innovation that brought back a lot of the ideals of the old peer-to-peer -peer world, like in the, in the early days. And uh, this, is, this is what we're part of. And of course, there's Ethereum. There's a whole bunch of other projects that are, that are interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit. And um, there, there is, I think a lot of you are already familiar with IPFS or how it works. Or, the technical details and so on, you can go and find uh, out there. We, I can talk a little bit about the model, but this is something important that I want to draw attention to you. It's always useful to step back a little bit and observe what changes are actually happening. So the Web 1.0 was sort of about putting con uh, content easily accessible on the network, just writing on top of the internet, being able to address each other's content and, and fetch it. Web 2.0 was about wiring programs to that being able to have dynamic content, being able to execute uh, changes in a really fast pace where you're, you're also collaborating with these applications and so on. Uh, but it's all still dependent on specific organizations and computers. And what I think Web 3.0 is, and this is you know, just my view, uh, there's probably others that are more valid, uh, is that we have an inversion going on now where uh, things like Bitcoin reminded us that we don't need to trust the organizations at all. We don't need to trust that infrastructure. We can just have content linked to each other, programs linked to each other, forget about the specific organizations or specific locations, and that is uh, the power that, that these new systems, like things like Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and IPFS and so on, are bringing about. It's this uh, inversion of, of, the, of how the, the computation actually happens. Right At the end of the day, this is all fancy ways of addressing and moving computation over data. It's just a whole bunch of data and a whole bunch of programs operating on data. It, simple, right? <laughs> Turns out to be pretty complicated, but uh, this is the thing. And um, this, this stack, uh, you can think of a, a sort of stack that is emerging around verifiable uh, decentralized applications that you don't need to trust anyone for. Uh, and you have things like smart contracts and multi-party computation as a component there. You have things like, um, ledgers and, and secure, uh, like consensus protected uh, transaction systems. 
Uh, you have underneath that, you have all these data structures that are just hash linked that are making all of this possible. Uh, Merkle trees, Merkle links. Uh, and at the very bottom layer, you have this like secure high performance connectivity framework. And so what IPFS is in, in the project is, is looking at the bottom <coughs> layer of that, making that a really high performance thing and enabling these applications to work better. And we have a model that we can't even assume you can have consensus. We can't even assume that you're able to talk to the rest of the network. Uh, so we really want to make sure that applications work here uh, in this room. So if we have a chat application uh, on IPFS, which we do and we'd love to show you later, uh, you should be able to chat with people in this room even if the internet is down, right? How many times have you uh, faced that problem where like just your connectivity to the rest of the world breaks and but your office is still good? <coughs> cool. So I, I will uh, stop there because I don't want to uh, take too much time uh, and really cement th this idea of the mission to upgrade uh, the internet in your minds in that uh, this is an evolving machine. Like the packet switching networks happened uh, you know, in the 40s, 50s, uh, around then. Then we got into like the ARPANET around that time. Then we got to the actual proper internet. Eventually the web, web came about and now we're ripping the web off of its location and making it all secure, properly linked and, and so on. So it's a very exciting time. All of the projects here factor in a whole bunch of different ways. There's a number of large open problems that we can think about. Uh, and this shared journey is something that we are all taking together. And it'd be great to have way more collaboration. There's already a lot of it. Um, but I think we, we need to be reminded of something that the web and the internet people understood really well, which is standards matter. Uh, getting agreeing on certain formats and structures really, really matter to make sure that adoption happens really well throughout the, the system. Uh, cool. Well, thank you very much. I uh, have a lot more to say about uh, IPFS and so on, and we can chat more later. Thank you.